I'd like to call order agenda of the Belton City Council work session, regular meeting, November 12th, 2019. We're calling the work session to, to order. And so uh, items for review and discussion, what do we have tonight? We have Shady Lane planned unit development. Um, Dave? Get my plan up on the monitors here for you. David Clemens, Director of Planning and Building. <clears throat> this uh, work session item this evening pertains to the planned unit development designation for the existing Shady Lane duplexes. Uh, there are 44 two-unit buildings for a total of 88 dwelling units. The new owner of Shady Lane recently acquired the property and the property owner is in the process of interior and exterior renovations uh, for all the units with the goal of providing an age-restricted 55 and older community. <clears throat> the owner will provide uh, on-site property management, maintenance seven days a week, lawn care, snow removal, overnight security, and it will be a small community building for social activities and, and, and programs. <clears throat> the project, as I stated, includes renovation of the 88 uh, two-bedroom duplex units, um, one and two-bedroom duplex units, and that includes uh, uh, patios, updated kitchens, appliances, full-size washers and dryers, uh, privacy fencing, and assigned parking spaces. Uh, I did print out a photograph of one of the renovated kitchens for the City Council. I'll place that at your seat today just to give you uh, an idea of the quality of work that's going into those units. And I do hope, hope the City Council has had an opportunity to drive through Shady, Shady Lane to see the, the changes underway and to see the exterior renovations of those buildings because it is, that's a great project for the community and it is a pretty substantial investment uh, and a good and, and a, a, a attractive project <coughs> for Belton. The planned unit development is necessary really just for two reasons we're doing the PUD. Uh, there are existing parking pads and it's difficult to see on that plan, but there are existing asphalt parking pads in front of the duplex buildings and the applicant would like to construct carports over those existing parking aprons or parking pads. Now technically our unified development code would require those accessory structures to be behind the principal building, to be behind the duplexes, uh, but in as much as there are existing parking aprons, parking pads, the, the developer would like to just provide the covered uh, carports over those existing pads and so the one of the regu regulations of the plan development is to write in the the ordinance to allow those parking parking carports to be placed over those parking pads. <clears throat> Secondly, the plan development is necessary in order to really to provide for the private streets that the applicant would like to uh, have in Shady Lane. These are public streets and this application includes the vacation of those public streets. The developer would like to provide a gated secure community uh, with two key controlled gates uh, into Shady Lane and the plan development uh, makes provisions for vacating uh, those existing public streets to provide for private streets and therefore uh, the property owner would be responsible for all future snow removal and uh, maintenance of those streets. And of course, there would still be maintenance, there still will be easements uh, provided for city utilities. <coughs> the Planning Commission reviewed the request at their meeting of October 21st, and the Planning <coughs> Commission did recommend approval to the City Council. And that ordinance is on a regular agenda this evening for first reading. Uh, the purpose of this uh, work session is just to provide you an overview of the project. Uh, and the applicant is present for a brief presentation and questions. Uh, as a follow-up to this meeting this evening on November 26th, with the council's direction, we will come back with a, a, a technical development agreement, which will be the implementation tool <coughs> for the planned unit development, and we will have a technical final ordinance <coughs> for vacating the streets on that agenda of November 22nd also. So those will be the necessary steps to conclude processing of this of of this request, uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. And as I stated, the, the developer, <coughs> the applicant, is present this evening also. <clears throat> yes, sir. 
Dave, I haven't driven through there in about a month, and then last you talked about the carports. Um, are they tearing out the old asphalt and putting in new parking spots? I know that they tore out all the the concrete for the walkways and all that other stuff. So I just didn't know if they or if they're doing that now. Yes, they will be. Okay. Go ahead. I just, I'll make a comment. I mean, I've been in this community for 45 years and whoever's doing this job, I commend them for coming in and spending their money because I think what they're doing back there is gonna be a great asset to our community. So I, I will thank them for spending their money in our community <coughs> and, and having this project. Other questions or comments? Over here, Councilman Lathrop. I, ha I have one question. You said if you vacate the street, they'll take care of the streets. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. They're going to take care of the storm water too. Uh, we, there will be easements over existing city utilities for our access. No, I meant the storm water off of the streets. If it needs something done on that, is that on them or on the city? Well, the existing storm water runoff would go into existing storm sewers. So, so they'd be responsible for maintaining the street to have correct drainage to the to the catch basins. Yeah. But once it's in the, uh, the storm sewer, then it's the city's responsibility. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Other questions or comments? I have a question. Sir. M not <coughs> too big a one. I, I don't see any elevation, uh, uh, what it's gonna look like, and, and I haven't driven through at all. So <coughs> can you help me out with that? Is there something in here? <coughs> well, there's a seven page plan set. <coughs> The only new structure really, Mr. Savage, is there is a community building that I mentioned, and there are some elevations of the community building. We work with them on building materials mm -hmm. for the community building, but the existing 44 duplex buildings are just all, they just all have new siding. Okay, what type siding? Um, let me have, I think it's, vi it's vinyl siding, I believe. The applicant could speak to that if you would like to be sure. I don't remember what was on the plan set. No, no real changes, no updates, nothing like that. Well, just new roofs, yeah, complete. Cover up with a roof. Yeah, complete exterior renovations, uh, siding and roofing materials. Okay, thank you. We probably ought to have the developer start coming up anyway. <clears throat> yes. I just, Tim, I've driven through there multiple times, Tim, and I will tell you they tore out all the drywall I mean, they basically gutted these buildings and put all brand new stuff there. So, I mean, I think it's going to be a good asset. If you drive through there, you might not see all of what they did originally, but you'll see the finished product. But it's it's looking nice. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. I, I uh, <coughs> I've certainly seen developments strip, strip the two bys, and a lot of times the outs the exterior doesn't change shape, but it change changes materials to update and upgrade. So that's what I was wondering about. Thanks. And I think they uh, changed, and the, would the developer stand up? Is it right, Dave, to let or somebody come I'd up be and happy to. talk to that? Could you uh, talk to the point of uh, what was replaced and all that so that they know? Because I've been out there several times, and it's pretty <coughs> incredible. So I should turn over to Mean Resby. This is the developer for the project. Hi, how you doing? Uh, basically, for the exterior, we've done new siding, new windows, new roof, uh, the concrete work on the exterior, also a new concrete deck. We've uh, put a fence around the entire perimeter. Um, I think on the PUD, we're trying to put gates up. Um, and I think in the interior, it's been gut. I mean, everything down to plumbing, electrical, HVAC, everything is brand new. I mean, the only thing remaining were some portions of the stud. Um, even the drain is brand new in the system, so, yeah. And, and these are, I, I just <coughs> add, these are all improvements that the developer already made, uh, even though we haven't received this approval yet, but work with the city staff. They've been so great, and we, we anticipated the approval today, so we went ahead and did these uh, improvements already. So if you were to drive by, you would see all these items he's talking about. Questions, comments? My question, which I asked before, was uh, storm shelter. What, what could we do? Or uh, Yes, so... Um, in regard to the storm shelter, we did engage our engineer to look at what would be the uh, additional cost to convert at least a portion of our existing uh, clubhouse, or not existing, our new clubhouse to a storm shelter. They indicated that it would increase cost by approximately 40 to 50 percent. Uh, and so with that in mind, uh, we were not uh, going to be uh, pursuing a storm shelter for this development. However, uh, I did speak with the mayor and let him know that uh, we are in negotiations with uh, the owner of the Twin Oaks development, which is adjacent to this one. And if we were to proceed with purchasing that and redeveloping it, we would uh, 
be very willing to work with the city to uh, construct some uh, storm shelter that both projects could utilize. Anybody else got any feelings on any of this? Any of this? No other questions? You got to drive through there to see it, to, to believe it. It's just made a, and I did that, <clears throat> and I called the owner to the north property. You can barely see it on the left side. <clears throat> to the north on my map here that we're looking at to the left. All those trees are all gone now. They've cleared that completely out for more development. And I talked to the owner and they're just getting it ready. Actually, he said it, it made it easier to mow. But uh, it's uh, looking really good over there. That's really cleared that all out. And so it's moving and shaking over in that area and they've done a great job. And I'm hoping that you all get those other buildings too. Because that's a, that's a big deal. We're hoping as well. I know that uh, it'd be a good thing. It'd be really nice. Good enough? Thank you. Thank we you. appreciate you coming. <coughs> wow. All right. Let's go ahead then and adjourn the work session. And we're going to call the regular meeting to order, and Councilman Fenn will lead us in the front. <coughs> of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Could we have the roll call? Mayor Davis. Here. Council Member Savage. Here. Council Member Lathrop. Here. Council Member Tretzel. Here. Council Member Van Winkle. Here. Council Member Clark. Here. Council Member Finn. Here. Council Member Davidson. Here. Council Member Peake. Here. Thank you. Okay. Consent agenda. One motion non-debatable to approve the recommendations noted. Any member of the council may ask for an item to be taken from consent agenda for discussion of separate action. Present. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion. Any concerns? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion passes. Wow. We're down to what? Personal appearances? <coughs> Ford Next Generation Learning Proclamation. I think we're going to, you want to give me that one right now? I'm going to read it from here. Or am I going to, do I have to go down in front? You can go down in front. Golly. <laughs> You know that uh, the Ford NGL program is exciting for our community, and we're excited for the school district and for the community that this is going to be a great deal. This is uh, pretty exciting. So, can I have, uh, who do I have coming up today for? Somebody's going to come up and get this. <laughs> Don't fight over it. Don't have anybody here. Huh? Yeah, I guess it'd be you two, Bring Dr. Big... Underwood, Dr. Yurkovich. <laughs> Holy cow. And I, we've got one for each of them. So it goes like this. And I hope I can get this loud enough for everybody. All right. Ford Next Generation Learning Community. Whereas a great education provides students with a foundation to pursue the American dream of a hopeful and prosperous future. And whereas... Friday, October 18th, 2019, the Belton School District was officially designated as a Ford Generation <coughs> Learning Community and member of the Ford NGL Network. And what number are we now again? 34. We're number 34 in America of the, these communities, and we're proud. Whereas, through this co collaborative, community-driven approach, the City Council, Belton School District, citizens of Belton reaffirm our commitment to enable all students via the academies of Belton to pursue the education that will best equip them for success in work and in life because every student deserves the chance to flourish in an educational environment that best leverages their unique learning style, cultivates their talent, and develops the skills needed to succeed in an ever-changing world. And whereas teachers deserve the chance to innovate in the classroom and do their best work by providing 
new methods for educational opportunities, developing imaginative and innovative pathways to challenge students to passionately pursue their goals and dreams. And whereas education should inspire wonder, stimulate curiosity, spark a lifelong desire in our youth and young adults to learn and grow, and the academies will provide educational options for students, regardless of background or economic status, to ensure all students receive a great education. And whereas education and the academies of Belton will help our community prepare future scientists, inventors, public service, and entrepreneurs who will apply their passion, leadership, and expertise to improving the world for both their generation and those to come. Now, therefore, I, Jeff Davis, Mayor of the City of Belton, do hereby recognize the Belton School District and the City of Belton as Ford Next Generation Learning Community and as a member of the Ford NGL Network. In witness whereof, <coughs> I have hero hereof unto set my hand and cause the seal of the city to be affixed to the City of Belton, Missouri, 12th day, November in the year of our Lord, 2019. <coughs> Congratulations, Dr. Yerkovich. And the other one. You can't have it. Okay, that's what she said. It's just that way. They can do that. Well, come on. There we go. It's a good deal. You know, we really appreciate it. You want to say anything? Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to thank City Council, obviously, for this, and uh, Mayor Davis. Uh, Dr. Yerkovich has put in a lot of time and effort and, and work into uh, making this a reality. We also have some of our convening organizations here. The Chamber is part of that, and Diane, thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Boone and Mr. Swaggart are here with the Belt Education Foundation. Uh, thank you guys for being there and a part of it, because our foundation is also a part of the convening organization. Uh, but really, uh, Stacy has put a, a lot of labor into this, a lot of miles, a lot of uh, work to expose other people and taking them to other uh, school districts that are uh, working on this and uh, we've yet to just begun and honestly till 2023 when we have our first graduates and then, then we'll know so I want to thank her publicly for all the work and effort. Good stuff. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. you guys again. Yeah, thank you guys again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay next. We have the buckle up, which means. Are you coming up? I know, but you may need one to walk up here. Are you coming up? Huh? Well, come on, let's go. Come on, girls, let's go. Come on. <laughs> You know, uh, Mrs. Cummings used to work with me a while back. And hopefully that's really all. <laughs> she really had a gift with kids, and I really appreciate her. And she's a good lady, and she worked with all kinds of kids. And uh, she did really well with gifted kids. So am I saying you all are gifted? Okay, good all deal. Good oh, they are. And a lot of our kids were kids that were gifted in art. So with that, buckle up, phone down, November 18th, 2019. Whereas the Missouri Department of Transportation, Missouri Coalition for Roadway Safety are challenging the community to buckle up and put your phone down. And whereas the challenge is simple, when you get into any vehicle, buckle up your safety belt, and if you're a driver, put your cell phone down. And Whereas in 2017, 937 drivers and passengers were killed in vehicular crashes in Missouri, and whereas in 2018, six of 10 vehicle occupants killed in Missouri traffic crashes were unbuckled. And over the last four years, crashes involving cell phones have increased by 35%. And whereas employees and safety partners will be making special efforts to reach out to businesses and individuals alike by buckling up and putting your phone down. Even for one day, you will be doing your part to make Missouri roads safer. And whereas the simple task of buck buckling everyone into the vehicle and choosing not to use your phone while driving can help you save your life, the lives of your passengers and occupants of other vehicles. Whereas it's time to join the movement, stand up and be counted, take the challenge, www.modot.org slash buckle up, phone down, arrive alive. 
Now, therefore, I, Jeff Davis, Mayor of the City of Belton, do hereby declare Monday, November 18th, 2019, as Buckle Up Phone Down Day in Belton. I urge all citizens to take MoDOT's Buckle Up Phone Down Challenge and learn more about the risk associated with cell phone use and not buckling up while driving. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city to be affixed to the City of Belton, Missouri, this 12th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2019. Thank you very much. Who gets this? Me? <laughs> Mr. Mayor? <clears throat> Mr. Mayor? Sir? I'd, I'd like to commend Mary and her students. Over the last couple of years, they've become... Uh, <laughs> say what? <laughs> <laughs> They've become tremendous partners for traffic safety and public safety uh, and recognized in the state. Uh, they've actually made presentations at conferences and they, they are, are absolutely outstanding people and very, very active in the, in the traffic safety and community safety and, and I commend them for that. And I did have the pleasure of being with them in Columbia and how many people did you all, I mean, it was a group of people, huge, that they presented at, and it was special that Belton was leading the way, and legislators were asking us all, how can we make this happen in our community? And it was really young people making a difference in, in everybody's <clears throat> lives. So, and this next step is a great step in the right direction. And a, a few weeks ago, you all actually gave approval to, uh, go forward with a grant that will allow for a conference to come to Belton dealing with all of this sort of information. And, and so once again, you, you all are doing a, a fantastic job. And the rumor is out. And so the Missouri Department of Transportation is now wanting to partner with us on that as well. So, so what do you have there? We have a couple of signs that we would like for the city to put up wherever they would like in Belton. Well, you need to talk into the microphone so everybody can hear you. We're giving these to the city. We have two of them to place somewhere, wherever they would like. Um, as a reminder. And then we have some things for the council members. I'm going to give this to you. And one of those in there is a card, and we would like you to fill it out tonight as your pledge to buckle up phone down. And we will take those and get those turned in so you can be registered as a buckle up phone down person. Okay. That's outstanding. Why don't we hold this one up in front and get a picture? And I'll get one with the blank side. No. <laughs> well, it's, it says upside down, doesn't it? No. And these were donated by MoDOT, so that was the really nice part of this. Congratulations, yes. folks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Make sure the buckle up piece is up. <laughs> wow. I guess we ought to go ahead and do this one at this time since we're here already. I've got one that I was going to do in mayor's communication. I'll go ahead and get this done. Um, I was uh, honored and uh, Carolyn Yatsuk over at the base, military group, the uh, employer support of the Guard and Reserve, the ESGR. They wanted to thank us and our support of employer values, military service for their employers. Missouri ESGR, they uh, would like to invite us, and they invited us for this, and we received this award from these, and we're really, with working in Work Ready in Belton and in the county, we work on this really hard. Seven Seals Award presented to the city of Belton for notorious uh, leadership and initiative in support of men and women who serve America in the National Guard and Reserve. And with this, this means we try to hire veterans every chance we get. And uh, Carolyn, I had her take this, and she couldn't be here this evening, but this is a really big deal that, uh, that we got honored because we're trying to get our veterans into our workforce. And uh, help me again, you veterans, it's a DD, come on, what's the retirement? 214. Golly, I was close, DD-14. We're trying to get it on the national level where when our veterans get their discharge paper, 
that we have all the things that they're qualified for when they come like to Belton they just hand that paper to and it has everything that they're qualified already for certified for which makes the process a lot easier we're really strong on this we appreciate what they've done for us and we're moving forward with that so I'm giving it to her so right nothing there yeah shooting people <laughs> How many veterans we got in here today? Come on, raise your hand. Uh, good deal. Okay. <clears throat> Ordinances. Okay, yeah, that was a brand new one. Okay, <clears throat> let's have uh, Nick. Are you here, Nick? Is Nick coming? Okay, when you come up, guys, just uh, tell your address and all that kind of stuff, okay? In our personal appearances, right. You're gonna start out, Scott? Yep. All right, Scott Swigert, uh, address 1009, Colburn Drive, Belton, Missouri. Uh, <clears throat> I wanna start off thanking you, Mayor and Council, for letting me speak tonight. Um, in regard to Ordinance 2019-54, as a lifelong resident and local real estate professional, I'm greatly concerned <clears throat> by the implications of Ordinance 2019-54 and strongly believe it is a step in the wrong direction for our community. I've been <clears throat> in Belton my entire life and have seen how fast it has grown over the past two decades and more significantly over the last few years. Uh, I've returned home to build my business <clears throat> with the goal to help our city continue to prosper. Since 2017, my business partners and I have invested over $4.1 million in the Belton economy alone through real estate acquisitions, development, and improvements. Our mission has been <clears throat> to help improve the housing market and provide fair and affordable housing for all. <coughs> Federal, state, and local laws and ordinances regarding housing guidelines have been in place for decades. These laws and ordinances already protect cities, landlords, and tenants alike, specifying regulations and standards of living. This proposed ordinance is simply unnecessary bureaucracy as laws are already in place accomplishing the same goals. Comments made at previous meetings, <clears throat> the previous meeting uh, in regard to this, as uh, the bottom line is safety and or the ordinance is a minimum standard of living, or the idea that this ordinance protects the health, safety, and welfare of residents are already outlined in detail in established laws and ordinances the city has in place, as well as federal laws. These include the Federal Fair Housing Act of 1968, Missouri Human Rights Commission, Department of HUD, Missouri Secretary of State, Chapters 441, 534, and 535, and current Belton City Ordinances and Codes, to name a few. <clears throat> and while these laws exist, what our city needs and our residents, tenants, and housing providers deserve is actual enforcement of the very laws made to protect them. The solution to poorly enforced laws is not to simply add additional <clears throat> repetitive laws, but to evaluate the current standards that already exist and find ways to better enforce them. The new ordinance does not protect the Belton community. It only makes the housing market more difficult to navigate for tenants and more difficult for investors who are committed to improving Belton. If we actually look at the specifics of the said ordinance, we find vague rules and regulations which limit both the rights of property owners and tenants alike, all masked under flowery language. Upon further reading, the ways that 2019-54 promises to protect the health, safety, and welfare does not <clears throat> uh, does not come with any specific checklist, fees, deadlines, and the right to intrude on privacy. Council members, I ask that you vote no on Ordinance 209-54. If truly committed to bettering the welfare in our community, we owe it to all our residents, whether it be owners, investors, <coughs> or renters, to specify how exactly the city will reinforce the rules and regulations already in place to protect both parties. Uh, instead, we have presented here what we have presented here is an exercise of power, invasion of privacy, as Mr. Savage spoke, and an ordinance giving the city unchecked reign to intervene in private contractual relationships between tenants and landlords. Our tenants and investors did not ask for more government oversight. What we've asked for is our city <coughs> to advocate laws already in place and encourage investment. Our community, including my partners and I, continue to be committed to help Belton grow. It's time the city takes a step back 
and listens to the community members who are on the forefront <clears throat> facing the daily challenges the city claims to understand. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have another. Name and address, please. My name is Nathan Priest, uh, 433 Lasley Branch, but I also have an office here at 204 Main Street in Belton. Uh, thank you, Mayor Davis and council members for letting us speak today. My family and I have been Cass County me members of Cass County since 2006, and at that time I began investing in Belton through the Belton Education Foundation. I donate on an annual basis, as well as investing in real estate in the area, buying dilapidated properties, fixing them up and improving them. My concern about this particular bill, 209-54, uh, is that it's treating a private property owner differently than a private property owner who's owner-occupied proper, who, who's owner-occupied. There's, there's a difference in how it's being treated. And if this is truly what's good, <coughs> why aren't owner-occupieds being exposed to the same inspection requirements? Um, as Scott mentioned, there's already codes and ordinances in place uh, that, if, if enforced properly, would be more than sufficient to correct the properties in Belton that have fallen in disrepair. Um, this, building, this bill is not tenant nor housing provider focused as it claims. It feels like it's purely a show of power and demand for additional control. Um, with the lack of defined costs, the ability to research the details and the references within there, uh, it was very difficult to find the references to Chapter 10 in, uh, in, the, in the code, as well as uh, Chapter 6, uh, Section 21. I, I had a difficult time finding that. Um, but uh, if this code passes, <coughs> it will raise rent rates. And as we all know, battling affordable housing is, is very difficult right now. And raising rents is only going to further that fight. <coughs> um, in, Truth be told, the tax code allows for a 1031 exchange. If, if there's excessive power here, it's very easy for investors to pull out and move to the next, move to the next city that doesn't have as invasive of a, of a landlord r restrictions. So um, there's no comparison in <coughs> this to a resale home inspection. Uh, resale home inspection, there's permission given to go in and inspect the property. Uh, the owner is um, under no obligation to improve the property to any standard. They're not obligated to do anything. It's purely a fact-finding mission. Uh, there's not requirements for improvement. Um, I implore you, vote no on Bill 2019-4, <laughs> and let's focus on the enforcement of the current codes already in books that Scott lined out so well. Um, and if the city's looking for ways to increase growth and revenue, I always refer back to the uh, housing study that was done earlier this year, and let's, uh, let's invite and incentivize uh, single home family developers to come in and, and uh, build new, new homes that families can grow into and attract new residents from other, area, other surrounding areas and uh, continue to help <coughs> Belton thrive and grow as it moves into the future. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Who we got next? Thank you. My name is John Watt. Nick Booth has asked me to speak on his behalf. What's your name again? John Watt, spelled W-A-T-T. -T. I'm an attorney and partner at the downtown long firm of Baker, Sturkey, Cowden, and Rice. Um, something struck me earlier when I arrived here. I heard about the Shady Lane plan. It sounded amazing. Everyone had questions about it. Um, those are private homes. Imagine if you moved into one and they said, well, we're about to sell you this, but you need to know once a year, an inspector is going to come knock on your door and he's going to demand to inspect the interior of your home. You cannot say no or they will get a warrant. That's how tenants under this ordinance, this proposed ordinance, are going to be treated. This is an additional tax on landlords. This is, and obviously in my position as an attorney, I've analyzed the ordinance. It is unconstitutionally vague as written. It violates the first, the fourth, the eleventh amendments and articles of the Constitution of the United States and Missouri. There is no notice provision. No one knows when you will come, where you will come, how you will come. They just know that you'll be there. It doesn't say how often. It does not lay out the cost of these private inspectors who will be there to look at the inside of your home. Most of you have looked at this issue, probably are aware that it has been brought up in other municipalities. 
Wyandotte County dealt with it. That required the state legislature to get involved. Uh, Senate Bill 366 in the state of Kansas said you can no longer come into the interior of a rental property with a warrant. The problems have been noticed by everyone, especially the way this ordinance is written. It is unconstitutionally vague and it will be invalid if challenged. On behalf of the businessmen who have already spoken uh, and out of absolute fairness for this additional tax on landlords, um, I implore you to vote against this. There is no, it's, it's not drafted to survive scrutiny. And as has been pointed out, this is, an, uh, this is a invasion of privacy for these tenants under the guise of an attempt to protect them. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, what was your address? It's 700 East 8th Street. Thank you. In Kansas City? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Ordinances. A, a motion approving the final <coughs> reading of Bill Number 2019-54. An ordinance approving a rental inspection program in the city of Belton, Missouri by adding a new Article 5 to Chapter 10 of the Unified Development Code. Present. Second. Motion is second. Discussion. Over here, Councilman Lathrop. Yes, I have a, a few items I'd like to present to the board on comments from the citizens and some of the developers, and I'm sure you have a few copies yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have nobody that was in favor of it, and I'm, I'm not going to read the whole five pages. I'm just going to read you parts of them. Thank you. The first one says, I am a renter and am concerned for a person or persons to enter my home should remain my decision unless I have committed a crime or have become a public nuisance. Is a person mandatorily coming into my house without being invited reasonable or lawful? That was a comment from one person, and that was a renter. It wasn't a landlord. The next one, I have owned rental properties since 2011. Another point that you seem to be passionate about is having safe, healthy places for tenants to live in. On that point, I would say that if the place is inspected before a tenant moves in, it would, be, it would meet that qualification. After the tenant moves in, we only have so much control over how they live. On smoke detectors, we install them before a tenant moves in. We put in their lease that they are responsible for changing the batteries twice a year or when it is needed. If we have to come change it, they will be charged for the cost of the service. That is the second one. The third one, I'm a resident and a renter in Belton. The city has absolutely no right to be infringing upon my privacy that is protected in the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution. <coughs> Discrimination is defined by Marion Webster as a prejudice or prejudicial outlook, action, or treatment. The act, private practice, or an instance of discrimination categorically rather than individually, while the term discrimination is being tossed around a lot these days, nevertheless, it would be adherent to the writers of the Constitution that a city is seeking to implement such discriminatory ordinance because I belong to a certain economic category and therefore have a certain level of housing, this ordinance discriminates against my household and me. This ordinance is not about dealing with individuals who are already in some sort of violation. By the clear wording of this ordinance, my household is seen as a problem not because of something wrong we have done, but because we cannot afford to live in a more or well-to-do area. No one has the right to come <clears throat> into my house and take photograph. If such a thing is ever attempted, I will refuse and fight it with all of my legal rights. <sighs> that is number three. Number four. I would like to voice my concern. I have had property in Belton for over 40 years. 
allowing a third party inspector to con come into the unit is an invasion of their privacy. It is a violation of their civil rights. Your ordinance is putting landlords at the, and the city at risk to be party to the violation. The items you have proposed in your ordinance are already found in existing ordinance and statutes. The last one. I have lived in Belton since December 1957 and have been a landlord <coughs> since 1984. I was invited to attend one meeting of the Codes Advisory Committee. After adding one comment, I was not invited back. My observation was that Codes was looking for yes people to be on the committee. I was in attendance at the October 8th council meeting. The purpose that was available, the proposal that was available does not set a cost for the inspections. I, when I read inspections, what I read, inspectors can raise their fee at will. And things that was printed that was being the ornaments, uh, half of them are really already have ordinances that would take place. Carbon monoxide detectors, uh, safe conditions, unrestricted excess. I mean, uh, the renters cannot tell you where to put your property inside. If you block a window, that's the people who are living there is the way they live. Ground fault interception, that has been on the laws for a long time. And furnace and water heaters, if you get your gas turned on, the gas company inspects those before they will turn them on. So that shouldn't have anything to do with it. No exposed electrical wiring. I can't believe anybody would try to rent a place that has electrical wiring hanging from the ceiling. Smoke detectors, that's already in. Uh, address numbers, visible. I mean, we have that now. All you have to do is drive by. You don't have to go in the house to see that. And a working sanitary sewer system. Now, I don't know where you would not have that if you have a house built. So anyway, that's my comments on it. Thank you, sir. Over here, anybody? Councilwoman Davidson. Uh, with all due respect, Councilman Lathrop, we actually did receive an email from somebody who um, was in favor of the proposal tonight, and I'll, I'll read that um, since we all have it. It says, Dear Mr. Lathrop, I am one of a number of tenants who have serious complaints about the management of Springdale Lake Estates owned by RP, RHP Properties in Michigan a $4.3 billion company. <clears throat> Generally, they react slowly to repairs, say they don't have enough staff, file evictions quickly even though most are dismissed, but tenants are loaded with attorney fees and court costs. Just check Mo CaseNet on any given month, and they do everything they can to unethically keep tenants' refunds when they move out. Specifically, if you notify them that you're moving or you give them notice, they keep your full deposit um, if you are still in your unit even one day into the new month rather than prorating it. I'm a single grandmother raising my two grandkids and lived here almost three years, broke my leg on the icy street that they didn't clear. My grandkids and I suffered from one mold or from mold due to faulty workmanship and was forced out on a termination of month to month tenancy in October because of my complaints. They finally worked on the mold and covered it up on October 1st as they forced me out. We can agree that my official move out date was October 7th, but instead of charging me for only that first week, less any damages, they said they're charging me for the excuse me, whole month and are keeping my deposit. The office girl, Kyler, even stated that she knows this doesn't sound right, but that's just what they're doing. Another tenant also went and challenged them for this deposit. He thinks he'll get it, but we're not sure. An elderly widow has paid rent on time since 1965 but a tree limb dropped on her roof after maintenance did tree trimming. They refused to repair it until she contacted the Missouri Gen Attorney General's office, but then said they lost her rent check and tried to evict her. These people are treacherous. I am currently protesting outside of the property after guidance from the police. 
because they have been totally unethical in the way that they've treated me and many other tenants and something needs to be done. I am trying to encourage some of the other tenants to attend some of your council meetings to voice <clears throat> their thoughts, but would like to know yours also. This is signed uh, Marjorie Frazier. She said, P.S. I have filed a lawsuit November 4th at 1.30 hearing pro se against Springdale due to the mold as it's difficult um, getting an attorney as a tenant and have also requested the Missouri Atten Attorney General step in and mediate, which they have tried but are being totally ignored. So that's just one email that we all received. And then I wanted to read something. Um, <clears throat> residential res Residential rental businesses are an essential part of every local economy, and Belton has long been an attractive city for those looking for investment properties. We're located on the outskirts of Kansas City metro area, and with the transformation of Richards Gebauer, we've enjoyed an abundance of inexpensive housing options for some time. Every city will experience an unknown percentage of rental businesses that operate illegally with or without business licenses, or I'm sorry, without business licenses. As such, we can only go by, we go by what we do know. Based on business licenses, the number of Belton rental properties currently hovers at roughly 35%. And while we cannot know how much of the local population that represent, some for some kind of comparison, just know that about 48% of Kansas City, Missouri's population rents. That's roughly one in two. As a council, we have been asked to consider this rental inspection program something that has already been adopted in several cities around us, including Excelsior Springs, Missouri, Gladstone, Missouri, Grandview, Missouri, Independence, Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri, Liberty, Missouri, North Kansas City, Missouri, St. Joseph, Missouri, Hutchinson, Kansas, Lawrence, Kansas, Lenexa, Kansas, Merriam, Kansas, Mission, Kansas, Olathe, Kansas, Overland Park, Kansas, and Roland Park, Kansas. Belton's proposed rental inspection program is nearly identical just for reference to the city of Independence. No exposed electrical wiring, same as Independence. No excessive use of extension cords. All smoke and carbon monoxide detectors are in proper and working <coughs> order, same as Independence. Address numbers are visible on the exterior of the house, same as Independence. All interior and exterior handrails, stairs, and decks are secure, same as Independence. All required plumbing fixtures are maintained and in proper working order, same as independence. A safe, continuous, and unobstructed means of egress is provided from the interior to public way, same as independence. All furnaces and water heaters are properly installed, maintained, and in safe working condition and capable of performing as intended, same as independence. <coughs> Lastly, property is free of insect and or rodent infestation. The inspection companies are companies already familiar with and working within cities where these ordinances exist. I did hear that there was no talk of fees. Um, it's been discussed several times as uh, $50 being the uh, proposed fee. These are not strange men coming in to take photos of tenants' personal belongings. And I say that only because I received several letters with that specific comment. I know there are good property owners and good landlords. No one is debating that. There are also legal licensed owners and landlords who are renting substandard abhorrent facilities. I know this is a fact because I've personally seen the conditions. It's easy to push the responsibility of reporting these conditions off onto the tenant. But remember that many of these tenants represent the most vulnerable among us, disabled, on a fixed income, a single parent provider, et cetera. Why don't they just call and report it? Well, to that I would say, if we're going to discuss personal responsibi responsibility, where is the personal responsibility of the property owner? After all, the intent to rent begins with them. I also think that it's unfair to compare home ownership and the home buying process to that of rentals and renting. The only thing that they have in common is that both are subject to their own rules and regulations. Past that, no comparison can be made. At the end of the day, we're asking a for-profit industry that operates within the city to spend roughly $1.36 per month or $0.04 cents per day based on the $50 fee to prove that their properties are safe for tenants. Currently, we're taking their word for it. What we're learning, and I think what surrounding cities have already noticed, 
is that we can no longer take a, a property owner's word that a dwelling is safe. And like any other business, it is okay for us to ask that they operate in a safe manner. I hope that we can one day get to a place where this kind of oversight isn't necessary. Nobody wants it. Unfortunately, in just my two years as a representative, I can tell you that we're not there yet. This ordinance should not be held up as the one and only solve regarding our housing challenges here in Belton. This is simply one tool in a bigger toolbox. This is not permanent, nor should it be made to feel that way. Even, and even independence has revised their own requirements. This is a process with the goal of making our rental housing safer and the process must be flexible and reviewed frequently. As I stated at the beginning, rental properties are a necessary and vital part of any local economy. Lastly, I would respectfully suggest that any council member who currently owns and operates rental properties in Belton abstain from casting further votes on the matter. Thank you. Anybody else next? Councilwoman Peek? I, was that a nervous twitch? Or? No, it was like not really nervous twitch. It's like I had a short little um, paragraph here, but um, Councilwoman Davidson pretty much summed mine up. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody? I'll speak. I have the privilege um, in the last couple of weeks to speak to several property owners within the community and get an understanding of what their feel is um, from both their tenants and themselves. And, and by vast majority, um, this was something that was not popular or, or something that they wanted to have happen in the community. Um, as far as my position and what I do uh, for a living, I think it's very important to respect these relationships. And I think the government stepping in and placing themselves in between the landlord and the tenant relationship is a very dangerous one that uh, it's a tightrope I don't think you want to walk um, and it's very concerning so um, after speaking um, with several property owners ones that and, and combined all together to put it in and I and the numbers I ran with 35 percent possibly being rentals in Belton that's roughly 2400 homes ballparking obviously uh, in Belton I spoke to um, landlords that own properties um, up to 100 properties and so no I wasn't able to cover all of them yet I was able to get a certain amount and again the vast majority overwhelmingly were not for this um, I'm looking to do the greatest good for the most people and from what I'm hearing from the community at this point this is not this is not a lever we want to pull right here so that's that's my stance on this okay, anybody else councilwoman Davidson I'll respond to that. Is anybody in this room going to raise their hand and admit to being a murderer? No. So would anybody, you know, anybody come out and say, hey, I have several properties that are substandard and don't meet the requirements on this list? No. Council, open the trussle. I would question the owners that have the rental property. Are they living in Belton or are they living outside Belton? They, you know, it makes a difference on how you look at things. Um, you know, if you're a resident of Belton, that, and that's a little one thing. But if you're not a resident of Belton, that's a little different situation. So something to consider as well. I spoke Anybody with both. Else? I'll respond to that. I spoke with both. Yeah. Smoke with both, mm -hmm. okay. Both Anybody sides of that. Long pause. Council Van Winkle. I had voiced some concerns about this ordinance the, the last time when we had our first vote on it. Uh, several of the things in it I don't agree with on how, how we're going about accomplishing what I think everybody wants, and that's the good of the of our tenants and our community and the, and the people that live here, um, I could be, I could have my mind changed if the ordinance was different, but the one that's before us, I can't support. Um, and I say that even with my personal and professional experience of going into many, many rental properties and seeing some of the disgusting things that 
you see when you go in, um, there's a there's a good and, and viable reason why people have concerns, and I also understand why uh, some of these people need to to be protected because they're not going to come forward. Is is uh, Councilwoman uh, Davidson commented, and and I agree with her on that point. Uh, I just don't agree with the ordinance and how it's written and and what it accomplishes and how it accomplishes it. That's all. Thank you. Anybody else? Councilman Clark. I'll just keep stating my fact. I mean, I've told you before, Mayor, that um, I've been in support of a rental ordinance, but I don't like how we are administrating when the, when the inspection is being done. And if we could figure out a way to have the inspection done in between tenants, I'd be on board. But until we do that, I'm still going to be where I'm at. Anybody else? Or forever hold your peace. Okay. <laughs> Let's do a roll call. Council Member Lathrop? No. Savage? No. Van Winkle? No. Trutzel? Yes. Clark? No. Peak? Yes. Ben? No. Davidson? Yes. Mayor Davis? Yes, and that motion fails. Yes. Okay. B. Mr. Mayor, please let, I know I can't speak, but for the record, let it know that I'm speaking in favor of this motion, and I don't think that we should allow tenants to be voted. Okay, but you, you can't. I understand. Okay, we got to get quiet. I understand. <laughs> And it, again, that in this case, it wouldn't have made any difference in the vote. So I understand it because nobody would allowed to speak. Thank you. B, a motion approving the first reading of Bill Number 2019-57. An ordinance approving an amendment to the city's zoning map to authorize the creation of a planned unit development in an existing R2 single-family and two-family planned unit development district subject to plan documents and conditions herein specified for Shady Lane, an existing two-family neighborhood located north of East North Avenue and east of Shady Lane, Belton, Cass County, Missouri. Second. second. Motion. Did you get your second? Clerk. Thank you. Okay. Discussion. <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion passes. Okay. Resolutions. Do we have any resolutions this evening? City Council liaison. Park lady. Oh, one second. Not a problem. Uh, the Veterans Day Parade was this past Saturday. We had a good turnout, so thank you for everybody that um, uh, turned out in support of our troops. It was a chilly one. Uh, registration is now underway for our Tiny Tots and Recreation Winter Basketball Leagues. You can register online at www.teamsideline.com backslash Belton. Come join us for a night in the jungle as you learn about cool reptiles. We'll have swimming, pizza, and games. Then we'll cap it off with a presentation by the KC Rep Repetarium, Reptarium? Reptarium. <laughs> and Education Center. They'll be bringing along several snakes and reptiles, so you won't want to miss it. I will, I will not too. miss it. Um, <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, kids <coughs> night out, they're, they'll, they'll love it. Kids night out, uh, it's for children 5 to 12 years of age. Cost is $20 for the first child and 15 for each additional. If registered by Friday, November 22nd. Event day, registration is 25 for the first child and 20 for each additional. And I believe that's at High Blue Wellness Center. Um, let's see here. Um, if you like to work in a fun environment um, and you're looking for some extra hours, come join our team at High Blue. They are now hiring a night custodian for the following shifts, Wednesdays and Thursdays, 9 p.m. to midnight, and Sundays, 6 to 9 p.m. <coughs> extra hours as a uh, sub are possible. Experience with detailed cleaning preferred. Um, applications are available at High Blue or online. And then I was going to talk about the mayor's Christmas tree lighting, but you might want to, I don't want to steal your thunder if you want to talk about that. Well, I'll just chime in when you're done. Okay. 
Well, you can join this guy for the official Mayor's tr Christmas tree lighting and kickoff for Operation Santa on December 2nd at 5.30, uh, lasting until 7.30. There will be entertainment, raffles, free hot dogs, Santa, and more, and the proceeds benefit the Belton Welfare Association, and that is out at Memorial Station. Outstanding. Is that it? Yep. Okay, uh, Andrea, since we started on Mayor's Christmas tree, how much money have we raised so far? A little over $12,000. And what did we raise last year? I think it was 10. No, we were able to give the association $10,000 last year. <coughs> Outstanding. So we still need to raise more money. We need to keep getting it as long as we can. I and, gave uh, you a check. <laughs> yes. It's a good thing. It is really a good thing. And uh, it's fun to see those kids out there. And the park does a great job of, of running that. Uh, with the mayor's communications, also I enjoyed uh, Councilwoman Davidson and Councilwoman Peak. I'm sorry, Mayor Pro Tem Peak, a ride in the parade, and my arm's still sore from throwing candy. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> I gotta quit. <laughs> but it was great for the vets, <clears throat> which I'll jump over to. Another one off is, is that uh, on a Saturday with the vets, we had uh, the breakfast at High V, and it was outstanding turnout, even with the ice and the snow. It was a spectacular turnout. I was so proud of our vets and listening to them and talk to their stories. And it was really emotional for a lot of them to be there. And it was special along with the vets on Saturday night, Sunday night, Sunday night, I went to the Marines birthday party out at Aaron's my first one of those. And that's where they take the saber and cut the, it's all symbolic and it's pretty special. So we want to make this a big thing every year. So we encourage all the Marines to come to Aaron's be watching and see when that is. So we did the, it was, it was great. They did hand out at the, at Hy-Vee, they handed out a memento coin that was special for our veterans too. And uh, I mean, they treated, Hy-Vee did a great job. Chamber uh, again today did the mayor's Christmas tree. They've done outstanding. And uh, I gotta tell you <laughs> that uh, it's just been crazy. I know you've just been Diane Huckshorn back there has been as busy as we have. She had uh, that event, the Mayor's Christmas Tree, and we had how many people there today? About 100. State of the city, okay, 100. Mm -hmm. And it was special. Then we turned around and did the Turkey Bowl on Saturday night. And how many people were there? We had uh, 22 teams, I believe. 22 teams. We actually raised more money this year than we've raised in the past for Belton School District Scholarship. Outstanding, and uh, I got to see Councilman uh, Clark over here when I was at the Marine deal back at Aaron's again, and he bowled a 300 again the other day, and I told him if he could have only hit 300 oh, for us wow. in baseball. Who's keeping score? That's <laughs> it's my, it's my best golf club's my pencil, but uh, you don't do that anymore. It's all electronic, so, electronic. All so electronic. congratulations on your 10th. You thought it was your 8th or 9th, you had to go back and count them up. Yeah. So that was a great thing. So we've had a lot going on with our veterans and they are special and we feel really good about it. City manager's report. Chief Sapp. Oh, just wanted to remind the council of a couple of invitations that we had sent you for events that we have coming up this week. Uh, it's uh, tomorrow we'll be doing a retirement reception for Robert Bellify. Uh, that starts at four o'clock at station two. And then on Thursday evening from 6 to 8, we're going to do a uh, badge pinning over at Memorial Station. Um, trying to start some new traditions to, to give, give some folks some buy-in on stuff. So this first go-around is going to be of the five officers that uh, was promoted recently. And then we'll follow that up. Each time we get new people, we put them on probation for a year. And so that's kind of their, uh, their graduation into to, the department at, the, at their year when they're off that we'll we'll do that for all of them so we'd be glad to see you guys uh, out there if you'd like to come chief uh you said tomorrow at four or what tomorrow four at station two station two mm -hmm. uh when we were talking about half cent sales tax today how many fire firemen have you got back now that you didn't have before well we had we had fulfilled everything that we had lost but due to some things like this retirement and a couple other issues we've been down to but um I did uh, hire two more that'll start December 10th, which would make us completely full staff. That's my birthday. <coughs> well, happy birthday. There you go. <laughs> okay, that's great. Thank you, sir. 
Uh, I had a great uh, stat. How many training hours did we do? Nine, was it 9,000 or 6,000? I think it was 6,000 something. 6,900 something. Yeah. So that's outstanding. So uh, they've done a lot of work over there. Pretty good group. Jay, would you like to come up, please? Good evening, everybody. I was asked to uh, speak on the uh, update on the rain gauge. It is installed out at the golf course. Um, hopefully, you all received um, the email with the link to be able to access the data. I believe that was also put on the city's Facebook page. Is that correct, Andrea? I don't know. Yeah. So yes. it's also available for all the citizens to access as well. Um, we should have installed it in the spring because since then we haven't had any moisture. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it is working. I think there's about uh, two tenths of an inch that it's recorded so far since it's been installed. Uh, but uh, like I said, it could have saved a lot of headaches if we could have got this kind of response earlier this spring uh, to get this in. But uh, just here to answer any questions that you might have. And uh, like I said, it does not take up a very big uh, footprint of the golf course whatsoever. And uh, it's kind of a talking point for those that play the golf course regularly. Like, what's that out there? So it is being noticed, but uh, just wanted to answer any questions that you might have. Councilwoman Pete, go ahead and uh, ask your question about what club or whatever you were talking that thingy. about. <laughs> the thingy. The, the yeah. thingamajiggy or whatever. Uh, Councilman Clark. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's not ours. I know that. Mm -hmm. What's oh that? that? That that there. That's not our. That that's not ours. No, no. Our 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 footprint is about. I want to say about five foot by maybe three foot wide. So it it's not uh, it's not a large uh, space, but uh, it is installed and it is working. And like I said, there's not been much to record, but uh, it's it's doing its job. Michael Christopher, I'm going to give you a second to get the microphone. How many, the, compared to what we have, our ring gauge on top, <coughs> how does that correspond out? Is it as good as that, or? No, I'd say that one's quite a bit better. <laughs> well, how much uh, rain have you had? What's the most rain you've had on your gauge in a 24-hour in a period? In a 24-hour period, I think we had a 5-inch rain this year, and I want to say that was around the July 4th time period. Good stuff. I think it was July 4th. So you get a lot of data from that also. Mm -hmm. But now you can get that mm -hmm. also. Yes, so. I can see two sides of town essentially. Well, that helps. What is also nice is that it does have a, a, the ability to go back and you can scan a particular uh, period of time. So from the day that it's recorded through um, today. So it will keep that historical data so that you can select how long you want to look at for that rain data. Sir, everybody can go on there and look too at the website, right? Correct, yeah, I, I forwarded the link to everybody and like I said, they did put that on the city's <coughs> website so it is available for the citizens. Will golfers look at that before they go out? No. It's never gonna rain on a golf course. No. Okay, <laughs> any other comments or questions? Our path only. <laughs> Thanks, Jay, you bet. appreciate it. And the last thing, um, we have our next meeting on November 26th, and then we will have one on December 10th, and the December 24th work session and regular meeting are canceled. Other business? <clears throat> Councilman Clark. I was approached by mayor, um, by some, a business owner, and actually talked to a couple other ones, and I guess we outlawed cigarettes inside, I don't know how many years ago that was, 2010 or something like that. And now the business owners are asking why are we not going after the vaping because they're not just putting in the moist like they used to. Now they're putting in other substances inside those. So some are probably not legal. Um, so, and they're doing it on the inside. So they asked me if that'd be something we would look at and maybe taking away vaping on the inside of businesses also. Um, the other thing I've been, I was actually um, talked to by a couple residents about, it's been about six months or so since we changed our trash company, I actually made the motion to change our trash company. And at that time we would revisit the um, recycling program. And I just wanted to bring that up and see if there's any changes maybe doing our community-wide recycling um, center that we did talk about back in back in that time. So just something that put on 
your agenda. Chief Person. Patrick, you may do some research, but I believe at the time that we uh, looked at our smoking ordinance that vaping was included in uh, and considered uh, part of smoking in all of the smoking ordinances. I'm taking a look right now and then Council Member Clark, I'll get an answer for you about regarding the vaping inside. Okay. And we'll put that try the uh, recycling. We'll put that on the, the agenda to look at it anyway. Other business. Councilman Tretzel. Since it brought that up, uh, there has been a presentation about moving cigarette sales to 21. So maybe if we, if we're going to talk about smoking, maybe we want to talk about that as well. You're 21, aren't you? They won't make any money off me. <laughs> also, we'll put that on there also. <laughs> We've adopted it. We are one of the smoking 21 communities. We've already adopted that. We're good. Which includes the uh, vaping. Vaping. Right. Also. Right. Thank you. I just wondering if we need to put some type of literature out to the businesses that vaping is illegal on the inside of it then because I think 10 years ago, I don't even know if that was around 10 years ago. I don't know, but I just, yeah. I know it's a problem and I know that, and I'm not gonna put Dr. Underwood on the spot, but it's, it's a trouble with young kids and in schools and, and uh, it's easy to hide is what I'm trying to say. So it is a problem and it's getting to be really serious. I think I just saw the other day in research that they've identified a, one of the chemicals that is really causing a lot of the health problems. So yes, we need to look at this. Any other new business? Well, seeing none, motion to enter executive session to discuss matters pertaining to legal actions to Missouri State Statute 610-0211 and that the record be closed and the meeting adjourned from there. So, a, second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, may we have a recall? The recall. <laughs> Roll call. Council Member Van Winkle? Aye. Lathrop? Aye. Clark? Aye. Savage? Aye. Fenn? Aye. Mayor Davis? Aye. Councilmember Peek? Aye. Trutzel? Aye. Davidson? Aye. We're adjourned and thank you.